Welcome to day 7 of the 2023 Advent of Code. So today's problem is called Camel Cards, so unsurprisingly it is related to card games. So we are working with a standard deck that goes from 2 up to aces, and 10 is represented as a T, so they're all single characters. Each hand in Camel Cards consists of 5 cards, and the relative strength goes from 2 up to ace, so pretty standard ordering. And just like in poker, there are seven types of hands that we can have. There's five of a kind, four of a kind, full house, which is a triple and a pair, three of a kind, which is a triple without a pair, two pairs, a single pair, and finally high card, which just means that none of them match each other. Hands are first ordered by type, so a full house is stronger than a three of a kind, regardless of which cards are there. So two, two, three, three, three is stronger than three aces, and then a king and a queen, because the full house classification takes precedence. If they have the same type, then they will be ordered by relative strength. So we start by comparing the first card in the hand. If they're different, then the stronger first card wins. Otherwise, we look at the second card. Note that unlike in poker, we don't sort the cards from highest to lowest. So with these two, three, 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 two, and two ace, 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 the first one is considered stronger, because even though in normal poker the second one is obviously higher, the 3 at the beginning of the first hand is higher than the 2 at the beginning of the second hand, so we don't do any reordering, we just process them in input order. To play, we're given a list of hands and a corresponding bid, which is a number. And each hand wins an amount equal to the bid multiplied by its rank. The weakest hand has rank 1, the second weakest hand has rank 2, and so on and so forth. So in this example, the strongest hand will have rank 5. Finally, we want to find the total winnings, so we just add up the winnings from each hand. So let us begin by processing the input. So for let's keep an array of uh, plays, which we'll define as a list of pairs of hands and bids. So for each line, in open zero dot read sorry just open zero so that goes through line by line hand and bid are going to be line dot split they're space separated so if we print this out we see that we get uh, a list of pairs and now we can do plays dot append hand and we're going to turn the bid into a number so now we get a list of pairs of a string and a number now we're going to want to sort this somehow. So plays equal, uh, dot sort, and in Python you can provide a key function to the sort. When you provide a key function, it lets you specify how they should be sorted. So if we sort this just as is, it'll sort them by the first element first, and then the second element. And so three is the smallest, followed by K, followed by Q, followed by T. And this is because they're sorted in alphabetical order right now because we haven't specified any other ordering. If we instead provide a key that takes a play and returns the index one, so the bid of it, then they'll be sorted in increasing order by the amount bid. So instead of sorting by this, we're going to want to sort by the strength of the hand part, which is index zero. So now let's define a function that will give us a sortable key object for each hand. So in Python, when you sort two iterables, so two lists, it will first look at the first two elements. If they match, it'll move on to the next one. Otherwise, the higher one will be considered higher. So it's just like alphabetical ordering. And so in this case, we're going to want to return a pair where the first element will be the type of the hand, and the second will be the hand itself. However, if we just give it the hand itself, this won't quite work, and the reason for that is because they'll be sorted in alphabetical order. But obviously, T, J, Q, K, A are not in alphabetical order ascending. But we can map them to be. So let's define a letter map, and we'll map T to A, j to b, q to c, k to d, and ace to e. We don't need to map the numbers, and the reason for that is because numbers are less than letters. So if we take uh, 
a list containing some numbers as uh, string digits, and then give it some letters as well. If we sort that, what we get is the numbers come first and then the letters. And so what we can do here is we can say for each character in the hand, we're going to do letter map dot get character where the default is the character itself. And so the numbers will be mapped to themselves every uh, and the numeric, uh, sorry, the letter labels will be mapped into an alphabetically ordered thing. Now we need to define our type function, which will classify the hand. Let's actually rename it classify so that we don't overwrite the existing type function. So we're going to want to return something that's sortable. And the reason we put the classification before the uh, alphabetically remapped hand is because the hands are first ordered by type. The way we can do this is we can first get a count of how many times each card shows up in the hand. So we can do counts equals uh, hand dot count character for, let's call it card, hands dot count card for each card in hand. And let's rename this as well. So now if we print out counts, we can say, let's classify, um, for example, AA334. We see that we get 22221 because A shows up twice, the second A also shows up twice, three shows up twice, the other three of course also shows up twice, and the four shows up once. If we change this to a three, we'll get two twos followed by three threes. And so now we can just return a value based on counts. So we're going to give the lowest value to the lowest type, which is high card. So we'll give this one a zero, one, and then this one will get a six. So let's do this. If any count is five, so if five shows up, then of course all of them have to be five. So counts will just be an array of five fives. So we can return six. If four is in counts, then the only possibility is a four of a kind. If three shows up in the counts, then we have two possibilities. If there's a pair as well, then we have a full house, which is four. And if not, then the other two are both isolated. So we just have a triple, which is uh, going to be a three by our mapping. Otherwise, we check for a two pair. So in the case of a two pair, our counts array will always be two, 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 one in some order. So what we can do is we can say if counts.count2, so we're counting the number of times two shows up in the counts array, if that's equal to four, then we have two pairs. So we can return a two. Otherwise, if two shows up in counts at all, it can only show up twice, of course, so we'll return a one pair. If nothing here matches, then the only possibility is for counts to equal an array of five ones, and so we return zero for high card. So now if we run it, we can see that we've successfully sorted the cards by increasing order of strength. We start with a one pair that opens with a three. This one is a two pair, so it's stronger. This one is also a two pair, but this one is considered stronger because it starts with KK, this one starts with KT. So the first one is the same, but for the second card, K beats T. This one is a full house, so it beats the two pair. And this one is, sorry, I meant this one is a triple, so it beats the two pair. And this one is also a triple, but Q beats T. So now finally, we can just say, let total equal zero for rank and uh, play in enumerate the plays with the rank starting at one. This is what we get. And so we can just say, um, we can also destructure this further by saying hand bid. We can say total plus equals the rank multiplied by the bid. And then we can print out the total. And that gives us our answer for part one. Where is it? Here. That gives us our answer for part one. Moving on to part two, to make things a little more interesting, we're now introducing an additional rule where J is now a joker instead of a jack. They're wild cards that can act like whatever card, but to balance it, J cards are now the weakest individual cards. 
So basically, we can turn the Joker into whatever to make the hand the strongest type possible, but it'll be the weakest when tie-breaking. So we're going to need to make a couple of changes. Let's first change the mapping. So currently, J is mapped to B. We're going to want to map it to something that's the smallest. We can't map it to any letter because all of the letters are bigger than the numbers, but we can map it to any character that is below the numbers. And so, for example, a dot would work. We see that a dot is less than any number. And if you want to look for these, you can use something like ascii-table.com, which shows you all of the ASCII characters in order. And so we can see that there are a bunch of symbols that are smaller than all of the numbers, so we can use any of those. Okay, so now we can remap J to a dot, and that makes it the weakest individual card. Now we also need to change the classification. So there are two approaches, and I'll show the more uh, brute force one, because I couldn't quite get the other one working. So I think it makes more sense to teach the first one because it's more manageable when you're actually solving this problem on the go. And it's still fast enough that it runs within like a second. So we're just going to try every single possibility for J. The other way you could do this is by counting J separately and then looking through the counts more intelligently. So if J shows up five times, then it's a five of a kind, but if j shows up a certain number of times and 5 minus that count also shows up, that means that the only two types that exist are j and some other thing, whatever it is. And so you can turn the j's all into that and get another 5 of a kind. That one is a bit more convoluted though, and so I'm just going to stick to this method. So let's move this logic into its own function. So let's rename this to score. And now let's make a different classification function. We're going to look at all possible replacements for hand. So we're going to take the max when we map score over uh, replacements for hand. So replacements will be a function that returns a, an array of hands that are all possibilities for what we could turn the jokers into. For each of those, we're going to take its score using map, and then we're going to find the maximum of those to find the overall score. So let's now define a replacements function where hand is a string and we want to return an array of strings. So the way we're going to do this is if the hand is empty, then we return a list containing only the empty string, because that's the only possible replacement. Otherwise, we're going to do a two-dimensional loop. The first loop is going to be uh, what the replacements are for the first character. So for x in, and then if hand 0, so the first card in the hand, is equal to a joker then our possibilities are all of the other cards, so not the joker itself. Otherwise, it's just going to be hand zero itself. So if we just print this for now, print replacements of, let's say, ace, ace, jack, queen, three, we just get A. And if we move the J to the front, we see that we get all of these possibilities. And so now we need to fill in the rest and we'll do this recursively. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking the first card in the hand, we're taking all of its possibilities, and then we're just recursively calling replacements on the rest of the hand to get all of their possibilities. So we can just tack on a second loop for y in replacements of the rest of the hand. And we can just do x plus y to combine the strings together. So this makes it a bit more clearly formatted. For each x in all possible replacements of the first card, which is everything but j if it's j and otherwise just the card itself, and then for each y in the replacements of the remainder of the hand. So now we get this, which shows up all of the possibilities. So 2a2q3, that replaces both j's with 2. 
5a2, q3 replaces the first j with a 5 and the second with a2. Uh, qa8, q3 replaces the first with a q and the third with an 8, etc. And so if I've done everything correctly, that gives us our answer for part 2. Let's briefly revisit what exactly we've done here. So we've basically kept the core logic the same, and that's why separating these out into functions is so nice here. Ultimately, part one and part two do the same logic. It's just given an array of plays, sort them in order of strength, and then just calculate the winnings. All we need to change is how the strength function is determined. It takes the type of the hand and then maps the hand itself into something that's orderable. And so when we need to change from part one to part two, all we needed to do was remap Joker to be the weakest card, and then just change the classification function a bit. And so instead of just returning the score of the counts, we took all possible replacements, which we'd be using a pretty standard recursion, and then we just found the maximum score out of all of those. So thank you for watching, leave a like if you learned something, and if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. In any case, thank you for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.